kiss your nerves goodbye. Here's your look at the Asmus Toys Evil Dead 2 Dead by Dawn 1 6 scale collectible figure of Ash Williams. Asmus Toys is excited to present the new 1-6 scale Ash Williams figure. The Evil Dead 2 Ash Williams figure has been faithfully recreated from the feature film Evil Dead 2, directed by Sam Raimi in 1987. The figure stands 12.4 inches tall, has over 32 points of articulation, and has an authentic likeness of actor Bruce Campbell. Well, it's not dawn yet, so we have a little bit of time to kill. Before we get a closer look at the Asmus Toys, Evil Dead 2, Dead by Dawn, Ash Williams, let's first figure out how tall the figure stands. Grabbing my, grabbing my trusty tape measure. Uh, Ash is 11 and a half inches in height, or he's about 29 centimeters tall. And to compare this version of Ash with a previously looked at one here on this channel, we can move over the Asmus Toys, Evil Dead 2, Ash, and bring in the one released by Sideshow Collectibles. Now, don't get me wrong, I still like Sideshow Collectibles' approach to Evil Dead's Ash, but I found there was always something a little bit off on his torso, and I found like his head was a little too elongated. Proportionately, I do think Asmus handled their Ash better. There, there are still things that I'm not as happy with on their head sculpt, but I do like what I've seen so far with their figure. First, though, the figure comes in clue with a display stand. Now, this is the standard issued Ash. There is also a deluxe, more luxury edition of Ash Williams that comes in clue with the floorboard in Henrietta. We will be looking at that figure in an upcoming review. But for the basic release, what you do get yourself is a hexagonal display stand, as you can see with the floor grating or the floorboarding on the inside of the cottage. Several splatters of blood, so somebody has been busy, whether it's been Ash or a deadite. And you can see, placard on the front, there's Ash Williams with Evil Dead 2, Dead by Dawn below. A little strange, though, that packaged along with this figure, you also get yourself a secondary placard. And I thought for looking at it that there'd be something different between the two, but it seems like they are identical. I guess the idea is if you do damage this one in some way, I'm not really sure how you would, you do get yourself a secondary one that you can apply to the stand, as there's really no other place that you can attach it onto this stand unless it was being used for maybe the luxury edition. We won't know until, of course, we have a look at that one. Uh, the display stand also does have an adjustable neck. For a second, it almost looked like a chess piece, but then realizing later, it says actually Asmus along the barrel of it. And of course, you do have the adjustable cr clip that will, of course, accommodate Ash. You can easily then take the figure and just attach him on top of it. Uh, certainly, when it goes for displaying this guy, he's the more simpler route versus getting the luxury edition that's going to have, again, that more elaborate display stand along with, again, the cellar door opened and Henrietta reaching out trying to grab him. As for the rest of the figure's accessories, Ash comes included with the Necronomicon Ex Mortis, loosely translated to be the Book of the Dead. Now, one thing that Asmus did trump Sideshow by was the Necronomicon. I'm going to bring in the other one that came included with Sideshows. So not only can you see there's a difference in size, but also the way the book is handled as well. While this is all molded plastic, and it did the fine job of actually re recreating the Necronomicon, now, Asmus actually did not only wrap the book in what looks almost like a faux skin material, but their book can actually be read, providing you're able to translate that. And while I wouldn't necessarily say it's been uh, drawn and illustrated in blood, uh, each one of the pages seem unique to themselves. I don't know how much I would pry the book open, though, because I don't know how much adhesive they've bound the book in. But the idea that they actually made it where you could open and flip through the pages is an incredible touch on Asmus's part. I really like the fact they did that. Something else I like that Asmus included with Ash was the Kandarian dagger. The dagger has been molded in softer plastic, so you see it has a little bit of give to it. While not individual, you can see at least they've painted the dagger so that the bones all individually stand out. I really like the coloring that they went with here. 
Of all the accessories, actually, I think Asmus handled well, except for the one overlooked accessory. Why wouldn't they have included the audio tape recorder, the thing that starts all of Asha's problems through the three films? But I do at least like the fact that they included the Kandarian dagger. It's nicely, again, sculpted and well-painted. I'm going to put that to the side. Something also that comes included with Ash is, of course, his, his double-barreled shotgun. The shotgun does open up, and while it doesn't look like anything is inside the chamber, that's not going to be very helpful when dealing with deadites. At least I do appreciate that they did put a hinge on this. And you can also take, then, the shotgun and holster it into the back, as he does have, of course, the little shotgun holder that he has in the film. And that slides quite easily in place. I almost thought for a second that the satchel seemed a little on the larger side, but again, dealing with the size of already the shotgun, I guess they probably could have made it just... I'm going to slide back in here. They probably could have made it just a little bit more narrow. Does it, it does seem a little on the big side, but not too bad. Not too bad at all. Looking at Ash's chainsaw next. One thing you may not know is that the front of the chainsaw that has the teeth has all been done in metal. You'll notice it right away when you pick up the chainsaw that there's a lot more weight to the front of it than there is to the back. And it is also cool to the touch. It's been painted and brushed with a dark gunmetal gray. And then they've given it some additional washing of a crimson blood red. I really think it's a nice looking chainsaw. And just to show you the difference between them, I'm going to bring in the one that came included with the Ash Williams from Sideshow Collectibles. Sideshow's not only has a longer blade with the teeth, but it also seems a little more straight too. Asmus's chainsaw seems a little bit more curved in the middle here. Uh, one thing also too is it's a little bit shorter. The one for sideshows is a little longer in the handle, and they've also added a much different contrast. So most of the actual chainsaw is a brighter red, and then they brushed on a darker coloring of black. In Asmus's case, actually, they've used a more darker burgundy to start off with, but still it allows the op opportunity for them to add some darker colors in there as well. One other thing that goes along with this chainsaw not only is metal teeth to the front, but there's also a pull cord as well. Now, I don't know if I how happy I am with this. I, I like the idea that they would have incorporated a pull cord. The thing about it, though, is while you're dealing with metal here in the front, that's already adding a lot of weight. And then you're also dealing with a very tiny threading on the inside cavity, the inside of the chainsaw. Uh, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to pull the cord out. And when you pull it, it lets go of the chainsaw. And as you probably already saw, pulling the cord sort of pulls the, the chainsaw up and down. Now, again, while I like that, I think it's fun that they would have incorporated a gimmick like this. The only thing I worry about is the the, the strength of that cable. Because if that ever was to break, not only would you have to try to find a replacement cord, but you'd have to disassemble the chainsaw completely to get access to it. I like it, but I don't think it's something I would have even put in there in the first place. Because I know that at some point, somebody's going to be pulling that cord and likely going to be breaking the threading inside. Still, this can attach... Uh, first of all, you can have him holding it in his hand. He has a couple of hands, actually, for holding the chainsaw. Uh, all of the hands that we'll look at more so in a second are softer plastic, so it actually makes things pretty easy to get that wrapped around the chainsaw handle like that. Or, of course, it does have the open area here that can attach onto the severed stump of his one arm on this side here. We'll, we'll do that also here in a second. Uh, speaking of stumps, were we speaking of stumps? Speaking of stumps... Ash also comes included with a bandaged up stump. Now, once he, of course, has taken off the possessed hand, he tapes himself up, bandages himself up. They've given you like a little cap here that's going to fit. There's a little hole on the inside here that's going to attach to the end forearm peg. Again, it's just a literal case of pulling the hand out and replacing it with this. Speaking of possessed hands, were we speaking of? Yes, we were. We were speaking of possessed hands. He does come with the evil hand. You can see... As it's been cut off there. There's a little bit of bone that still sticks out. Again, I know I already said this, but I do really like the choice of red that Asmus went with. We'll see a lot more of it when we look at of Ash's head sculpt, how they really chose a good red, I think. You can see there's some gash wounds there where Ash would have, of course, tried to, to stop the evil hand. I really also like the pose in this. And while, of course, for obvious reasons, you can't reattach a severed hand. You'd need medical attention for that. You could probably, if anything, just attach the hand onto the top of his shoulder. That might be what I might end, just end up doing. Uh, he also comes with a couple of pegs. If you do have any issues, I have heard some people having issues with their pegs on their ashes breaking. Uh, you, you do get a couple of extra ones, so don't want to hold on to those as well. And of course, for the rest of his hands, 
Uh, currently, right now, in the sockets of his forearms, he's got closed fists, good for punching deadites. He also comes with a couple of trigger-firing hands, so of course you can take yourself, let's grab, once again, the shotgun here. And you can take the shotgun and fit it into his hand. And again, being that this is softer plastic, involves no heating then on your part. Simply just, it's a little harder, of course, to do this in front of the camera, but just take the hand, pry the fingers away from the palm, of course. Oops, let's not drop the hand in the process. And like I said, you're just going to pry the fingers away from the palm far enough away. So at least then, yeah, there you go. You get the finger right on the trigger. Perfect. And you can either have it looking as if he's about to load or he has just finished loading and he's going to blow away the brains of some evil deadite. As for, though, the rest of Ash's hands, we already looked at the fact he does have some trigger firing hands for holding the boomstick. The figure also comes included with a couple of hands, possibly for holding the Kandarian dagger. It comes with a couple of hands for, I would imagine these hands more so to be holding the Necronomicon. As you can see, it perfectly holds it between the thumbs and the fingers. In all the cases, by the way, all the hands seem to be given a dark wash of black to really make them dark and grungy. And the figure, of course, also comes, I keep saying, of course, the figure also comes included with some gestured hands as well. I guess that would be good if he's possessed, for example. So I really like those. Uh, all of the hands, by the way, are simple to remove. Go ahead and just hold on to the forearm and just wiggle the hand off and remove it from the peg. And of course, seeing as we're dealing with this side of the hand as well, you can take then the taped up ba bandages and just attach it onto the end post like that. Or I also can remove it. And short of the fact that this, this version release of Ash doesn't have the ripped shirt, you can still then take the post and attach it onto the end of the chainsaw. Now it is going to add some additional weight for obvious reasons, because of course now you're dealing with a metal chainsaw end. So when you are attaching it in place, just make sure you're putting it in firm enough, strong enough, that of course it's not going to fall off, as I've just done right now. Might even just help your benefit to actually bend the elbow first before you attach the chainsaw. But like I said, it's going to add a lot of additional extra weight. I'm really sure really what else I would have done differently to this. Uh, maybe one thing is I would have maybe had the chainsaw end to be metal. I mean, plastic is more than, I'm fine enough with plastic. Because again, when like when you're putting it onto his forearm, for example, it's a lot of extra weight. Not enough weight, I think, that's going to stay in place. And one thing you're also doing too, as you probably have already seen also, is when you're taking the peg and you're trying to fit this into the socket, that little opening of the chainsaw, there's an inside ring of plastic, and that starts to fray the plastic on the end of his forearm. Again, just plug that in place. I almost feel like in a case like this, what I maybe would have done, there we go. Do we finally have it in place? There we go. I would have maybe, I don't know, because really the, the problem is the fact that there's a small hole to deal with, and you're dealing with, first of all, a very tiny little peg. Let's bring in the peg right there. That's the peg that you have to work with, and that is doing all of the work of holding the chainsaw. Yeah, I don't know really what else I would have done, because you really would need to still have those, unless they made those posts longer. Maybe that's one thing they could have done, made it a little bit longer, so it would have to have rooted further into the chainsaw. And of course, that would also involve them having to probably come up with brand new pegs, because all of the hands universally are usually the same sized hole. Yeah, maybe if they just used slightly longer pegs, preventing the chainsaw from falling out as much as it does. The weight of the chainsaw, though, may not be the deciding reason why you pick up or pass on this figure. Of course, it all settles on the head sculpt. When looking at the head sculpt here for Ash, there's things I think they handled better than the Sideshow release. And for again, we're going to bring in the Sideshow Collectibles version of Ash Williams so you can see the difference between the two. First of all, I do think that Asmus ha handled a better skin tone for Ash. One of my biggest problems has always been with this original Ash figure was that he was way too pale, sort of sickly in his color scheme. I do think the warmer tones are definitely working better on the Asmus release than what we got from Sideshows. Not to mention that sideshows seemed way too long. It always was something that bothered me about the figure. Like the head seemed way too long proportionally for the rest of his body. Asmus, though, looking at the head sculpt, and it's not perfect. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in a second. But I think skin tone wise and looking more bearing a better resemblance to Ash Williams. Uh, I think he looks a little bit more like him on the Asmus release than on Sideshow Collectibles release. 
You can certainly decide for yourself. Let me know down below in the comments section. Like I said, though, it's not perfect, though. And there's things, of course, of both the head sculpt. I think it looks better for Ash on certain angles. Looking at it straight on, there's something a little off about it. And I thought maybe what the issue was, was maybe the fact that his ears possibly are too big. And it may be the fact that also with the ears, they're a little lower down on his head. I think one of the biggest ones, though, is, is his hair. Like the hair, I think, is too full on the sides. And what it ends up ultimately doing is it makes his head look too big, even bigger than it actually is. Because like if his hair was a little bit more slicked back, I think it would make his head look ultimately a little bit smaller than what it does. So I think it's sort of a combination of things. Maybe the ears are a little bit too big. Maybe they're a little bit lower sitting on his head. But certainly when you're looking at the hair, I think it sticks a little too far out on both the sides. Again, this is the basic release. The luxury version of Ash I don't think is any diff different of a head sculpt. Although there is the possessed Deadite version of Ash's head that also gets included with that figure. We'll do, of course, more comparisons of that when we eventually have a look at it. Other things I probably would have also done on this Ash is adding some additional 5 o'clock shadowing. He certainly has it in the film, but he doesn't have it anywhere here on the figure. It sort of gives him almost a, like a baby face look to it. I think like the eyes are good. I think the mouth and nose are decent on this figure. Like if I was to do this and I was to do this, I think it does look like Bruce Campbell. But maybe it is like the hair that's throwing it off for me. The paint is also really good on this as well. I think they've done a really nice job of painting in the darker red on not only his ears, the little gashes that he has on the sides of his head. Not only is that, but also the red he has just around the top crown of his, of his hair, or just before we get to the hair. The hair, as you can see from the side, not bad, really. Looking at that, that looks like Bruce Campbell to me. Again, we spin it around to the back. I just, I just feel like the hair is maybe a little bit too thick, a little too full. From the side... It's not so bad. From this side, certainly it's not bad either. I mean, like that, I think that looks a lot like him from this side. But when you see it from the front, I think it's just a little too full for my liking on the sides. And maybe that's the thing that ultimately does make this head sculpt, like I said, look a little bit bigger than really what it is. Now, as for his outfit, he is wearing the full long sleeve shirt. The luxury version of Ash from Asmus will actually have a swappable shirt. So we don't actually have it in this case. Uh, this one does have, again, the full sleeves. Now, what they've gone and done, and they've just gone in and obviously dirtied up the shirt like he would have had. And he does have, again, like that strapped holster that holds not only the pull cord for the chainsaw, which I, I definitely would not recommend pulling the cord and trying to sit, situate that in there. And, of course, that's the thing, the very same thing that holds the satchel on the back to hold his shotgun. Uh, this would be a case that you would have to detach this when we eventually look at the luxury edition. And you're going to, yeah, swap this out for the ripped, torn shirt that has the bare sleeve. But as it goes, certainly for it right now, it does look pretty good. I, I think it looks a little high. Like, I feel like the, the shirt, maybe it's not so much the shirt, like the pants maybe need to just come down just a little bit. It looks as if his shirt is actually tucked in. So yeah, again, I probably would just maybe hike the pants down just a little bit because I feel like the pants sit a little too high on the figure. Pants look pretty good too. I don't have any real complaints or issues with the pants. He does have the, like, the torn leg like he would have had in the film slightly scuffed up there in the knee like the material that they've used for the pants and the shirt are actually pretty good they've stitched in the back pockets area there as well and then he also does have of course the hiking boots those boots are nicely sculpted as you can see there's the laces and off two-tone coloring of brown and they've also sculpted the under treads and just one last time to bring back in the sideshow collectibles release Sideshows definitely went with the more lighter coloring of brown, and definitely there's a difference in boots. I actually like the boots a little bit more in Asmus's release. I do like the like the more it's not quite a warmer brown, but it certainly is a lot browner of a brown than the chestnut brown that they decided to go with for the sideshow collectibles release. And again, just to show you the difference, yeah, it's a ripped sleeve shirt on this one. This one doesn't have that. I do think like I like the brighter colors, I think, a little bit more for on Asmus's release, especially like the coloring of the shirt is way too pale on sideshows. Uh, like overall, I'm not I'm not disappointed with the shirt, the pants. Again, like I feel like the pants are a little too high on this figure. I, part a part of me, if I just continue to do this with the figure. Like, I, I do think overall, Asmus handled the figure really well. Like, again, my biggest issue really is just the fact like his hair. I know I already said this already little full on the sides i maybe would have just tr just slicked that back just a little bit like even just doing that i feel already makes his head seem smaller than what it actually is for the figure's articulation let's go ahead and have a look at that right now his head is on a ball joint so it rotates all the way around 
it allows the head to look down and up and up. And now sometimes doing that will pop it off the ball post. You can also hinge it back and forth also as well. Shoulders do come out. Uh, one thing I did notice about this figure and it worries me every single time I do this a couple of times moving the shoulders out. I feel like a snap. It's not a snap like something is broken. It's a snap as if like the joint needs a loosening. I do that sometimes also with the legs too. Like there's a ratcheted joint for the legs and maybe you get more of the happening uh, occurrences of that snapping while you're moving the legs. But periodically, ever so often, I move the shoulder and I feel like a snap and I start to worry and panic right away. It's not the case. He has a bicep swivel. He seems to only have a single hinge on his elbow and the hands of course rotate all the way around hinging back and forth. Ash has an upper torso, what seems like an upper torso ball joint. That's just really, really stiff on this figure. Maybe he doesn't actually have it. It's maybe just has a waist swivel underneath all that. Legs split out. Doesn't sound very good, does it? Uh, you can bring the legs forward. You can bring the legs back. There is a swivel on the top of the thigh. The figure does have a double hinge on the knee, or is it just a single hinge? It does maybe feel like there's a single hinge only there underneath the pants. He has a ball joint in the ankles. Of course, that allow the hiking boots to move back and forth and up and down. And because it is, of course, self-contained, you really can't independently move the toes or anything like that. They actually, they've used a really hard plastic to accommodate the boots. Uh, you know, overall, like, I, I think I'm, I, I like more about the ash than I dislike about the ash. Does that make any sense at all? Like the positive things I think are the skin tone look a lot better on Asmus's release than it did on Sideshow Collectibles. Sorry, what? Oh, one more comparison? Okay. Moving over then the Asmus Toys version of Ash and bringing back in the Ash that we got from Sideshow Collectibles, short of the fact he doesn't have his chainsaw, which I guess we can kind of quickly fix. Just put that back on his hand. This chainsaw always was prone to falling off. You know what? We'll just, we'll just leave it off because I don't want to knock the figure over in the process. The things I did like about Sideshow's release, but do you think like collectively... And you can agree or disagree, but I think collectively, I like more of what they did with Asmus's release. Like the skin tone looks a little more like Ash is actually living and breathing. I think the head sculpt looks closer to Bruce Campbell than what we got with the Sideshow Collectibles release. The coloring of his outfit is brighter. It's a little bit more vibrant, especially the coloring of his shirt is that brighter blue that I think works better for an earlier movie Ash. Later into the movie, of course, when he gets the torn ripped shirt exposing the side of his arm and it gets a little dingier and darker in that color scheme. I don't think I would go with the brighter colors for his shirt, but like earlier Ash, before he starts ripping up his shirt, I think the brighter colors for the blue work better for the figure. I think the pants look a little better on the Asmosis release, uh, like the material that they ended up using. I think actually like the boots look a little bit better as well. It's not completely positive. Like Asmus's does notably have what seems like a larger head, like, like proportionally when you're looking at the head against the torso, it seems like his head is again, way too big. I know I keep going back to the same point, but maybe it's just the hair. Maybe it's just the hair and the size of his ears that are slightly throwing off the head sculpt. But I think collectively, collectively, at least my own personal opinion, I think Asmus handled a better looking Ash than what we got with, with Sideshow Collectibles. Agree or disagree? Let me know down below in the comment section. So like I pre-ordered Ash Williams here from Asmus Toys like sometime last year. I think it was about mid-summer when they first dropped the listing and I had heard it was going to be of a limited quantity. So I got in on that pre-order right away and then I waited and then I waited. And while other people had the chance to look at their figures, because of course they probably went the different route of ordering this guy. End of January 2022, he was supposed to ship. And then that January turned to February. And February, before I knew it, went way into March. And before I knew it, I was late into April and just assumed it was going to be another month and they were going to start shipping this guy in May. And Murphy's Law, as it always be the case, it ended up shipping right at the very end of April when I was using that money for everything else. So as it goes, usually for collectors. I finally, finally got this guy shipped to me. And I got to say, like, I lean more favorably towards this figure than disliking it. From what I've seen from other individuals, there are valid points certainly made by them. But they have commented that some of the figures, like the head sculpt-wise, looks a little cartoonier. And, you know, I see a little bit of that. But I think, though, Asmus did handle a better head sculpt and likeness of Bruce Campbell than what we got with the Sideshow Collectibles. Just my own personal opinion. 
I think with the sideshow's biggest fault with that figure was that again, it's there, it's artist's recreation of the character, and I think it looks less like the likeness of Ash, and it certainly looks more like a comic book version of Ash Williams. Some have said that this one actually bears a little more of a resemblance, to like what Ash Williams would look like in the video games, because he's a little smoother in his complexion, and I, you know, I can understand a little bit of that as well. I think what would have really helped to jazz up the head sculpt on this Ash was maybe adding that mentioned already five o'clock shadow. Like his face is a little too smooth and clean in some of the areas. But I think, though, honestly, I think it looks more like Bruce Campbell than what we got with the Sideshow collectibles. His head does seem a little on the larger side, but depending on how you angle the head, like if, if I've got it down right now, slightly on a down angle as he's loading his shotgun, I think it proportionally throws off whatever issues I had with the head sculpt being, whether it be the ears being too big or just like the fullness of his hair. If you get the angle just right, and it shouldn't always be the case where if you get the angle just right, but I find if you have it looking in a certain pose, it looks more like Bruce Campbell than maybe if you're looking at it straight on. But I certainly do think, all things, all intents and purposes, I think it does look more like the actor than what we got with Sideshow Collectibles. Now, again, like this figure does have some issues. A lot of my issues really is not so much on the head. It's actually the chainsaw. I like that Asmus would have included a metal chainsaw, at least the end of the chainsaw being metal, but the added weight of putting that in means that it has a bigger problem, not only of it staying onto the peg, but it also causes problems if you ever want to display the figure with the chainsaw on his hand. If you want to ever have his elbow bent, for a while I had my Sideshow Collectibles uh, Ash with an elbow bent, and I didn't have that problem because the chainsaw was all hollow plastic. Because now we're dealing with metal, you're also going to be adding some additional unnecessary weight to the shoulders and the elbows. So I think in this case, I probably will not display this Ash with the chainsaw on his hand. Or if I do, I'm probably just going to have his arm running parallel to his body and not adding extra unnecessary weight to the shoulders. Because I really don't want these elbows to get loose over time. Other things I really like about this figure, he's definitely got brighter colors for his costuming. Now, of course, this is the regular version. We haven't yet looked at the luxury edition that does have the ripped, torn sleeves. Maybe I might be a little more heavily criticizing that one because it's, it should have a more darker, like really soaked looking uh, look of the shirt. Whereas this shirt sort of is ash earlier into the movie. And I can certainly understand why the colorings need to be brighter on this outfit than maybe ash later into it when he's got the torn sleeves. But overall, like, I'm really happy with how this one turned out. And again, if you're looking to get this one for yourself, the price point for this one was, I think, $199. If you do get the luxury version, of course, that's going to be adding some additional money. I think it's like $100 on top of that. But, you know, for a basic entryway of getting what we got with the Necronomicon being having actual pages of a book and all the accessories that we actually do get for this figure, I think $199 is a steal if you're looking to pick up an Ash Williams for your collection. Is it perfect? No. But I honestly feel like it's a little bit better to being closer to being perfect than what we got with the Sideshow Collectibles. Just my just my own honest opinion. What do you guys think? Do you guys agree? Do you guys disagree? Let me know down below in the comments section whether you picked up this figure for yourself or just based on this review and this review alone. Also, if you guys are new to this channel, you're enjoying the content that you're seeing, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. Turn the bell notification on so you're always, always going to get those reminders of whenever new videos are going to be popping up. And of course, at the very end also of this video, popping up will be a playlist of other Asmus or Asmus toy reviews that have also covered off over the years. And of course, we are, yes, as promised, going to be looking at the luxury edition of Ash. His review will be coming up shortly, so making sure you're keeping your deadite peepers peeled to this channel. As always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.